Hey there, Anomalies. Welcome to the first episode of the Anomalous Educator Podcast. Have you ever wondered how to start a YouTube channel and make a living traveling the world? Well, in this episode, we're going to talk to a teacher who has done just that. I think the reason why my channel has been successful is I just... Gabby Wallace has 1.2 million, yeah, million subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. By the time you listen to it, she probably has more. In this episode, she's going to share with us how she did it. Enjoy the show. Well, for those of you who don't know, it means you haven't been on the web recently because Gabby is one of the influencers on YouTube. She has over 1.2 million, you heard that right, million subscribers. Gabby, she's the online coach and founder of the Go Natural English. You can go to gonaturalenglish.com, right? Yep, that's right. So she has helped students from over 134 countries learn English. Maybe she can help me because I sometimes have trouble with my English when I'm speaking and doesn't make much sense. She's also done one of the things that I dream of doing one day. She has spoken on a TEDx talk, which tells everybody here she is obviously legit. This TEDx doesn't let people, just anybody on there. They haven't let me on there yet. So you can see, obviously, they know what they're doing because I have no business talking <laughs> on a public stage, right? So Gabby, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. It's an honor to have you. Um, and I think a lot of the people here are going to be able to learn a lot. For those who've listened to my podcast in the past, I tend to have two different types of podcasts. One is informational, one is inspirational. Gabby falls in both categories because she has created an amazing business from the ground up, bootstrapping, which I love since that's kind of, you know, my wheelhouse as well. So welcome, Gabby. And let we can get started with a question. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, you know, how did you get started in the world of online education? Yes. Thank you for that awesome intro. So just a little bit of background. I come from a teaching background. I became a, an English teacher, ESL, actually because, well, two reasons. I really wanted to travel. And I, I was actually studying international relations and I was doing model United Nations stuff. And I was like, oh, I want to work at the UN. And then um, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be a diplomat. But then through some volunteer activities, I started uh, tutoring English and I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. I like working with people who are learning English and, you know, I get to learn about their culture and I really wanted to travel. So I thought, okay, well, teaching English abroad would be pretty cool. And this was, this was a while back. This was, um, you know, not before the internet, but like before <laughs> people were really, you know, having online businesses like they are now. So I went to Japan, ended up teaching English there for three years. And um, it just started from there, really. Gosh, then I, I still had this desire to travel even more. Like I was already in Japan, but I was like, oh, I, you know, I really want to travel um, on my own time. Like I don't want to wait until the vacation time or I don't want to, um, you know, be like really limited in, in my freedom to travel. So that's kind of when I started thinking about making my own business. Um, and I forgot to mention the other reason why I ended up as a teacher is I just, I enjoy helping people. I enjoy teaching. Uh, and I enjoy inspiring people to you know, learn and um, just live their best life. <laughs> so, so then, you know, from teaching in a classroom, I decided to start making videos uh, tutorials for English learners and posted them on YouTube. And this was just kind of like a random thing. I mean, man, when I was, so I was in Japan teaching English in 2005, 2006. And, um, this was before I started Go Natural English. I got my hands on a video camera and I just started recording some random festivals and, you know, experiences in my life, uh, living in Japan. I was like, Oh, this is cool. So I want to share it with people. How am I going to do that? And I had heard of YouTube, which had just started, I believe it actually started in 2005. So it was like the year after 
um, or very soon after, you know, I, I, I posted my video there. Those videos didn't really do anything. It was just like a random, you know. This was pre-smartphone, right? I mean, this was not like everybody had a camera on their phone back then. I had a camera on my phone. I'm visualizing. I had this little flip phone. Yeah. Did they take <laughs> videos? You and I are like pretty much the same age. So we're, um, we're like dating ourselves here. We're like, did they have well, <laughs> Like, I don't remember. I don't how good. have video, but I know I had a camera, but it was one of those like really fuzzy, you uh-huh. know, bad, horrible cameras. Anyway, I'm telling this story because that gave me some familiarity with YouTube and I knew, I knew how to upload a video. And then, you know, fast forward to 2011, I started making these tutorial videos for my English learners. And I thought, well, how am I going to share them with my English learners? Oh, YouTube. I'll just upload to YouTube. And uh, yeah. And now, I mean, I guess we'll talk about where I am now, but you, you mentioned already, like with the subscribers and the business and been crazy. It's been so amazing. That actually yeah. brings up an interesting question because a lot of the teachers who are listening to this probably have the same assumption. Mm. You're on YouTube. You're an online entrepreneur. Does that mean you're really technical? Uh, oh, we're gonna go there. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big doubt that a lot of teachers have out there. They're like, I need to be a computer expert before I can even take a step online. It's one of those oh. big, you know beliefs that they have. Is that true? No. Listen to me, people. I'm not a tech expert at all. The only way that I am an online entrepreneur is because I'm really good at trying things, you know, being okay with falling flat on my face and failing. But one thing that my mom always told me was, okay, just try another way. And that I keep thinking of that every time I, you know, don't do something right. Every time it's not perfect. I'm like, that's okay. I'll just try another way and make it better next time. And that's worked out pretty well. I'd say 1.2 million you know, <laughs> subscribers on YouTube. That, that's, you know, pretty good by almost any standard. So you said you started, you took these videos on your camera and they weren't that great quality. I think, you know, when we first met, you told the story and I think people should go and check this out of your first video, which you still have up there, right? Uh, could you tell us a little bit more of what your first video looks like? So the very, very first one from 2006 or the first one from Go Natural English 2011? The one where you're walking up to the camera and you can see oh, yourself walking up. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> it's good to share. That's exactly yeah. it because people see you now as this super successful entrepreneur and they don't realize where you started. You know, they realize, no, she's, I, they can't relate sometimes. And they think that just because we run successful businesses, we're different than they, we're not. Right. We went through the same things that they're going through now. We just might be a few years ahead of them because we started. So the first few videos that I posted on YouTube that are still up there had absolutely no editing. I mean, you can literally see me walking, like turning on the camera, walking over to my chair, (laughs) sitting down, talking to the the viewers. And then I get up and I go turn off the camera. And I, I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to even get my hands on a video editing program. I had no idea. Um, I was using this thing called a Zoom Handycam. It doesn't exist anymore because like you said, smartphones didn't have video cameras or good ones anyway. And so, I mean, this was before, well now every, I mean, if you have a smartphone, you can make video like just using what you have. It, it's never been easier. And so you shouldn't let tech stop you. You shouldn't let your lack of editing skills stop you because the thing I think the reason why my channel has been successful is I just keep doing it. Like I just don't stop. Even if it's not perfect, I just keep doing it. So you're saying consistency is probably one of the keys to your success. You you would say? Yeah, but I don't even want to, I don't want to lie because I'd be a hypocrite if I said, Oh, you have to, you know, make sure that you post every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three times a week, or you're never going to be successful. I mean, I have done that, but I've not always done that. That's the thing. So in an ideal world, I would. I would totally post three times a week, but um, life happens. And consistency to me just means that you don't stop. So you continue in a way that is doable for you. And ideally, that would be, you know, at least once a week. But I'll be honest, it's not even always been once a week. It's just, you know, I keep showing up. Um, on YouTube, you know, I have some social media following. Um, I just, I just don't go away. 
my secret to success. <laughs> well, that could be a takeaway from this. Just don't go away. That, that, that's how you make a successful business. How do you push through the rough patches? I mean, we all go through those, right? There's some days where you're like, oh, I don't know. To, I don't want to do this anymore. Or, you know, days, weeks, months might go by where you kind of think that, but you have to, tr- you know, just push through it. Yeah. Do you have I any tips for that? Question. Absolutely. Because I go through a lot of rough patches and these are not the things that you post on social media. So people don't think that you go through rough patches. It's like almost every day there's some rough patch. So the thing is, you, well, how I get through them is to always go back to the why, the reason why I'm doing this. And this is something that I really thought hard about when I started my channel. I, in 2011, um, March, 2011, I thought about really what I wanted to be doing with my time, um, how to help people more, how to, you know, share, what my knowledge that I could share to help people learn English and um, just thought about why I wanted to create this. You know, it wasn't to be an influencer. That wasn't even a thing. Oh my gosh. In 2011, that wasn't even a thing. Um, It wasn't, you know, to be popular. It, It was kind of like maybe in the back of my mind, it could be an opportunity. I think I thought more in terms of like, getting a better job, but I didn't even really think in terms of, wow, this could be my full-time thing one day. Um, so just really going back to your why, which for me, my why is I really love freedom. So having my own thing, having my own business is really important to me personally. I don't think it's the best thing for everyone. Maybe it's not for everyone, but for me personally, it's really important. And, um, being able to help people. Honestly, whenever I feel down, whenever I have a rough patch, I just think, oh, what could I do today to help someone? Because whenever I I feel like I'm helping someone, that makes me feel really good about myself. So it's kind of like self-serving. So anyway, those are two big whys for me. Um, And just remembering that. And just to share one other thing, uh, there was a point, I think in like 2013, where I almost just quit. I almost just um, stopped my YouTube channel. Uh, I almost just stopped trying with the whole online business because it was a lot of work and very little money, right? I was at this dip and um, I, I think I just read the book, <laughs> The Dip, actually, by <laughs> Seth Godin, where he's like, yeah, no, it's okay to quit. Go ahead. And so I was thinking like, oh, wrong book for the wrong time, I guess. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) totally. But I was really considering quitting because here's what was going on. I was working full time as a teacher. I was getting up early to work on Go Natural English. I was uh, staying in after work, you know, not really going out that much on the weekends. I was putting in time. So basically all my free time, I was working on Go Natural English and, um, not really making much money. I mean, it was definitely not something that could support me at the time. And I mean, at the same time, it was kind of growing in terms of viewership on YouTube, but that just meant I was getting more and more kind of trolls. And, you know, as humans, we focus on the negative. Like if there's one negative comment and a hundred positive, of course, I'm going to focus on the negative one and be like, oh, they think I'm ugly. Everybody hates me. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So um, it was really tough, but I just wanted to share that because what got me through that was remembering my why and actually thinking about the future and thinking about like, do I prefer staying kind of on my course? Like um, there's nothing wrong with being a teacher, but I felt like maybe I wanted to try something different. I mean, a classroom teacher, like I was enjoying it. It's like, oh, maybe I want to try. I want to see what could happen if I keep doing my own thing. And I really liked the kind of that, um, feeling of exploring sort of like trying something new, creating new things. So it was more, I guess, a feeling of, I can't not do it. (laughs) Lots of double negatives, but yeah, hope that makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. I actually, that actually leads to a question I have for a lot of the teachers, because one of the things I find when I interview teachers and entrepreneurs, the big difference is the motivation kind of tends to be very different. Teachers are very much about givers. They're, they are all about giving to other people. Um, not, 
entrepreneurs sometimes are not. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I put myself actually in that category. We interrupt our regularly scheduled programming for this important announcement. Are you suffering from chronic teacheritis? Do you suffer from regular outbreaks of, this is not why I became a teacher, I can't make ends meet on a teacher's salary, or why do I have to use this useless material for my students? Then a weekly dose of the Anomalous Educator podcast could be the pseudo-magical solution you are looking for. It has unscientifically been proven to help teachers cure teacheritis and learn how to make a side income, or replace their entire income by teaching online using methods they know are best, without having to use some government-mandated material. It has also been shown to provide more free time to spend with friends and family. To report your case of teacheritis today, please log on to the website www.anomalouseducator.com or subscribe to this podcast. The Anomalous Educator podcast is most effective if taken with a glass of wine after a hard day at school. Warning! Side effects may include sudden urges to quit your jobs, travel the world, and start improving educational systems and lives of students everywhere. Please consult your physician before starting. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. That also brings up a challenge for teachers, though, because they sometimes feel guilty making money teaching because they say, I would do this for free anyway. I love it. I'm giving back. They feel guilty or they feel that it taints their teaching to get something in return, whether it be money or something else. Yeah. What advice do you have to those teachers out there? So just yesterday, I created a lesson uh, for one of my online courses for teachers. The lesson was on money mindset. So I'm glad this is fresh. In my- <laughs> so in, just so you guys are listening, we will actually put a link to that in the show notes directly to that so that you can watch it because this is exactly what we're, you know, what we're talking about. So go yeah. on. So, well, and this is inside a, a member's course, but um, the money mindset um, okay, well, in that case, you then you'll have to buy Gabby's course. So I'll put a link to yes. that in, into the show notes. Um, so I had to work a lot on this because I had those feelings that you were describing just now. And so, oh, there's so much I can say about this. I just, I'm like, where to start? Okay, so one, I had to realize that um, people often, like the students will often value you're teaching more if they're paying for it. Sometimes we don't value things that are free as much as things we pay for. Um, Also, when you're teaching someone, I mean, you have to realize that your teaching is of value. If you're helping someone get a better job, have a better life, like do something that they want to do, that is valuable. And it's hard to put a price on that, right? It's, it's hard to, that's one of the biggest questions I get too, is well, how much should I charge for my teaching? And um, in the money mindset lesson, I was talking about really thinking about the value that you're bringing to other people and not necessarily your price per hour or trying to like be the best price out there. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Like you have to also think about how to give people ways to pay you. So sometimes we don't offer a way to pay you. And then you wonder why am I not making any money? Well, because it's not clear how to actually pay you for your teaching. Um, so I hope I'm answering the question. I feel like I could, I could say a lot about money mindset, but it's something that teachers have to work on a lot. I mean, realize, I think if I could just say one thing, realize how valuable your teaching is if you're helping someone to transform their lives, that's worth a lot. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I have the strongest, strong belief that teachers should make as much as doctors. In fact, you know, from childhood, we spend a lot more time, hopefully, with teachers than we spend with doctors. I mean, they're much more influential on our lives, unless you're unfortunately born with a chronic, you know, illness. You're not gonna spend six hours. I don't remember how long is school. I don't even remember, but let's just say like six, seven hours a day with anybody except your teachers. In some cases, that's more time than you spend with your parents. If your parents have a, you know, a, a really busy job and they're working, you might actually spend more time with your teachers. Teachers are important. We don't respect them as much as we used to, and they really influence our lives, and they're doing it. I, what's that famous quote? Uh, I do this for the money, says no teacher ever, or something like that. Because yeah, nobody goes into teaching for the money. These people go into it because they want to give back to you. I think they deserve to make you know a good income to be able to support their family. There's some places, at least in the United States, where 
you can make more money working at McDonald's, I think, than you can at working as a teacher. Okay. That's not fair. Yeah. And online can change that, I think. If your teachers go yeah. online, they can change that. One thing that makes me sad is seeing some really talented teachers out there that haven't really discovered the marketing or the sales that they need to know. And I think that's where, where you come in, where I come in as mm-hmm. well, because like they're so talented and they should be making good money, but there's a disconnect there. Yeah, exactly. It's the mental disconnect that you just talked about, which is they feel guilty asking for the money, but you should look at it. You know, I'm coming at it. You and I come from different aspects, right? I'm coming from the business side. You come from the teacher side from the business guy. Look, teachers, I will tell you, you, it's not really a cost. You can look at it like an investment. And that's what I do when I pay for training courses. You know, if I'm going to pay $500 or $1,000 for a course, it's because I expect that that knowledge is going to help me make more than that. So you shouldn't feel guilty as a teacher. You're not costing me money. You're helping me make more if that's the case. So if you're teaching us some kind of knowledge, whether it be math, English, French, psychology, nutrition, whatever it is that you're teaching, you are helping somebody's life much more than what you're charging if you do it well. And I think that's what a lot of teachers need to learn how to do. Um, so the biggest thing you said, you know, you just got started because you had the need. So kind of going back to your origin story, what was the tipping point kind of, you know, you said, okay, I said, I just, I started making videos, but what made you start making that first video? It's not something most of us, at least back then, these days with selfies, everybody's taking videos of themselves, but kind of what said, okay, I'm going to make a video. You know, YouTube yeah. wasn't a big thing. What made that start? Okay. So it was actually something kind of traumatizing um, because March, 2011 was the huge earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And I happened to be living in Japan and that was a horrible, horrible um, experience for many people. And it made me really think about what do I want from life? You know, it made me think life is short. And I just thought, okay, I want to give something more. I want to create something. Um, it also made me, I think more comfortable with risk and being, uh, feeling embarrassed, you know, seeing myself on video. And of course you feel totally embarrassed. Your videos are not going to look good. At least the first dozen of them. So you are going to feel embarrassed. You are taking risks. But I was suddenly way more okay with that because it was really, um, just put in front of me that life is short. And, um, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but it was a, uh, I guess, a positive of that horrible, horrible um, event. So that's what kind of triggered the whole thing and got you started. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to other friends who have had kind of traumatic experiences or life or death kind of experiences. And they've told me something similar happened to them where they're like, they just realized life is short and they, it made them think about what do they really want to do with their life. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing that's, that's happened to other people as well. Wow. That, I don't know if you've ever told me that story before. I was like, no, that's, that's amazing. I, I, I didn't realize that. I don't talk about it a lot because usually I get the reaction. It, it, it's kind of like heavy. It's like, Oh, Oh God. Well, um, I mean, it's, it's the truth. That's, that's how it came about. I, I think it's actually great that you're being honest. I think a lot of us have, those stories in our past. Um, it again, it goes back to something you said earlier about how you post on Facebook and people just see that. Uh, another one of the phrases that I like is like, I wish my life was as cool as it looked on Facebook. Right. I mean, because you know, our, our lives are like freaking amazing on Facebook, but that, that, that doesn't show you the days where you're like, you woke up and you're like, oh, I don't want to roll out of bed. I mean, you know, everything looks perfect when we're on Facebook, but you know, a lot of us have trauma somewhere in our lives, you know, not, it's not out there for everybody else to see, but it's there. And, you know, once you dig deep, I think it also helps people relate to us because we, again, you realize Gabby has 1.2 million follower viewers. Her life must be perfect. Her life's pretty good, but it's not perfect. I'm sure, right? There are days and there are weeks and stuff where things go wrong. Well, so the interesting thing is like our highs, uh, you know, for me having that many subscribers is definitely a high, but that was a direct, um, uh, I guess, consequence of, of a very low point. And I think we see the highs on social media. We see them advertised, but we don't really see those lows that came usually right before. Exactly, exactly. And so if anybody was listening to this kind of going through a darker period now, you can kind of look at it from the other side. This might be the incentive you need to kind of take that step. And you might yeah. look back on it, you know, five years down the road and say, this is the moment I decided. 
you know, to make the step. And it was awful at the time. I would, like you said, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But without that, I wouldn't be where I'm at, I am today. It's a decision we make. You can either let whatever that is beat you or you can, you know, use it to motivate you to kind of take that next step and grow as a person. Absolutely. So, speaking of growing, what's next for Gabby Wallace? Woo! Well, um, a lot of things. I'm really excited about the future. I'm excited about continuing to grow Go Natural English. I mean, it is an exciting thing to see the YouTube channel grow, to see the online course grow for English learners, to grow my team. And um, as my team takes more and more responsibility there at Go Natural English, I am helping um, online teachers to build their own businesses. I, at the core, I am a teacher who loves to inspire people to take action. And I think that is not just about teaching English. It's about, you know, helping people to take action in other areas of their lives. And so, um, GabbyWallace.com, if I can mention my website, that's the place to find tips, uh, entrepreneurial tips, online teaching tips, um, really for the uh, teachers and entrepreneurs out there. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to end with one question because you've alluded to this in some of our conversations earlier. You are a woman entrepreneur. Hmm. How do you think that defined you? Because that's very, still unfortunately, much more rare than it should be, right? I mean, it's not as equal as it is online. Was that an advantage or did that create challenges or a little bit of both? Oh man, this is like a, a big question. I didn't prepare for this one. I, um, I think that whether you're, you're male or female, you have to lean into your strengths. And, um, you know, for me, that's, that's being creative. That's helping people. I don't know if, I guess those are considered more feminine traits. I think, you know, when I go to a conference, uh, entrepreneur conference, often it's like 90% men and 10% women. I feel comfortable in that kind of environment. I've, I've always kind of enjoyed, um, I guess the more masculine energy, but I, I feel like I also have to be a bit more masculine to kind of be heard and like be a bit more aggressive in my communication. So I think that you have to know the environment you're in and learn to communicate effectively in that. Now I'm talking like an English teacher again, but it, it's true. It's you like- You are an English teacher. So, you know, right? talk like yourself, right? <laughs> but I mean, if I'm in a conference with a bunch of guys, I'm probably going to be a little bit more- aggressive in my communication, like interrupting or whatever to, to get heard. If I'm, you know, among women, we might have a different way of communicating. Um, you know, just like when we're in a job, we might communicate differently than when we're with our friends. So, I mean, I think that as a woman, as a female entrepreneur, I have to know how to, uh, code switch a, a bit, which, you know, people know if you're, well, you know this. It went being bicultural. I mean, you code switch. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? Well, that's exactly. I tell people I sound American, you know, uh, on a podcast like this for the listeners and those who, you know, who haven't listened before. I'm like an Asian American who grew up in the Middle East and lived in Latin America for more time than I lived in the U.S. Yes, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to code switch all the time. Um, so that's amazing. So, so you're saying that that's been kind of one of the useful tricks you've picked up along the way to kind of reach your level of success as a female entrepreneur? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I would like to see women more represented in, in different conferences and um, in the entrepreneur world. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's happening little by little and I'm doing my part to, to try to encourage women to, um, to get out there too. Well, that's it. I think you're ex extremely motivational. A lot of people listening to this, hopefully a lot of the women teachers and entrepreneurs who want to get into the online teaching field will be inspired by listening to your story and how you got there. Hey there, Anomalies. Ray here. I hope you're enjoying this interview. This is just a short reminder that if you like what you're hearing on the Anomalous Educator, you should subscribe to the show on wherever you get your podcasts. That way you won't miss any of our weekly episodes. If you have time to take that extra step, you can leave a review for me as well. If you prefer to tell me directly what you think of the show, just go to the website anomalouseducator.com. That's A-N-O-M-A-L-O-U-S-E-D-U-C-A-T-O-R.com. Yeah, it's a mouthful. And you can email me directly through our Contact Us page. Thanks in advance. So I'm going to end it off the same with the same question I end all of my podcasts with. And that is if you had to give one bit of actionable advice 
that the listeners could take away from this and apply today to their lives, to their business, what would it be within the online education space? One bit of advice. I would just think about what you could do to help one person with one thing today and um, and, and do it and see what happens. I mean, um, I was going to say to make a piece of content that could maybe keep working for you. You know, some people do like, uh, live lessons like this and that's cool. You could help people that way. But you know, one of the, I think keys to success is to create content. So see if you could help someone with a piece of content, whether that's a blog post or a quick tip on social media or a video, um, yeah, that's, I guess it's a quick tip. Is that a quick tip? I don't that's know. That's <laughs> a good tip. One piece of actionable advice. So guys go out there, guys and girls go out there and create one piece of content that can help one person in the world. And you'll be surprised how much that can affect people as a teacher, online educator, edupreneur, whatever you call yourself or whatever you aspire to be. Um, if you can help one person and make one person's life better, I think that's worthwhile, regardless about the money, the monetary side of things. That's it. If we can make one person's life better for having been in it, I think we've reached our goal. So with that, thanks, Gabby. Where can people reach you? You've already mentioned GabbyWallace.com. That'll be in the show notes. Where else can they get in touch with you? We'll put all of this in the show notes, guys, so you don't have to memorize yeah. it. GabbyWallace.com is the best place to reach me. If you're curious about the business that we've been talking about, it's GoNaturalEnglish.com. You can take a look at what's going on over there or on YouTube, Go Natural English. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been awesome, Ray. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gabby. It was awesome to have you. And for the rest of the listeners out there, stay tuned. Definitely follow Gabby on all the social media. You can learn a lot from her, whether you're watching her or on Go Natural English or just going to GabbyWallace.com. You are doing yourself an injustice if you're not following her. So thanks again, Gabby. Awesome to have you. Hey there, Anomalies. I hope you enjoyed the chat with Gabby Wallace. Who knows? Maybe some of you listening to this are the next YouTube stars. If you do decide to start a YouTube channel after listening to this episode, please let me know. Go to our website, AnomalousEducator.com and contact me. If you want to catch future episodes, just subscribe to us on wherever you catch your podcasts. In the next episode, we're going to catch up with an English teacher who started the number one travel podcast in the world, Travis Sherry. We're going to find out how his mother, who's a teacher, inspired him to get into teaching himself and how that led to becoming the number one travel podcaster in the world. It's a great chat. Talk to you all next week.